example if you don't do that. And we're ready to roll. So can everybody see the screen? I hope so. So I've been so I've been doing with my day. Well, a very warm welcome to today's marketing webinar, all how to harness sales trends. It's very nice as always to see um, see some familiar faces. And uh, welcome back uh, for those of you who uh, like to spend their Tuesday afternoon in my company. That's um, great to have you aboard. As always, we say the same thing every week now. There's the chat line, so please feel free to, to use the chat line. We are recording this, and uh, the slides will be available to all participants. And if you want to, uh, to say anything on social media, there is the uh, Twitter handle. And as always, there is one-to-one -one help under this Grow My SME program. So if anyone fancies a little bit of personal assistance, that is there. And that is free, no less. I'm going to ask a little favour of you, if you don't mind. Can I ask a little favour of you? If uh, we have the programme set up for next month, where uh, next week we'll be talking about Google and we've got, we'll be talking about Twitter and we'll be doing some work on video marketing over the, over the coming weeks. But any particular topic on sales and marketing that you would like to have covered, we do requests. We do requests. So please, uh, a little think about that, and uh, please feel free to uh, to pop that on the chat line, and be more than um, uh, more than happy to um, to oblige. So without further ado, we normal rules apply. You know, we, we do have uh, uh, questions and quizzes and things like that. But actually, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get myself fit at this moment in time. And I've hired a personal trainer. I have. I said. I said to him the other day, I said, could, could you make me for, more flexible? He said, can you, you know, can, can you make, you know, um, sorry, can you, can you help me do the splits? He said, how flexible are you? Well, I said, I can't do Thursdays. And I, I tell you, I've, just been, I've just been down to the, um, just walked back actually in the snow from, from the supermarket and I took, um, I went down there, saw the manager, I took, I took something back. I said to him, look, I, I, this, here I've got this, this vinegar I'm returning, it's got lumps in. Oh, no, they're not lumps, they're pickled onions, he said. Right, let's move on. Let's move on. There's nice tomfoolery. We have quiz time, quiz time at the ready. And um, so, without further ado, we like to do this. Ends at the ready. Believe it or not, that was a question on an American quiz program, which the person unsuccessfully answered. So there you go. Right. Here we go. True or false? All about sales today. Only 24% of sales emails are opened. True or false? Oh, oh we've got the chat line. Got to go to the chat line here to see what... Um, um, right, it is true. And before we move on, I want to thank uh, both... Kevin and uh, Gary, who uh, value, value propositions, we're going to mention this today, and Google Analytics. Yes, Jerry, we are going to talk about, about Google Analytics. So there'll be a guide to Google Analytics as well. So thank you for that. Anyone comes up with any suggestions? So true or false? Sales emails opened. It is, with that drum roll, it is true. Only 24%. So you have to be really careful in thinking about communicating with your, your customers, whether they are in fact, open the email or not. So here we go. Got choices here. What is the optimal length for a voicemail? No voicemail. Eight to 14 seconds. Or the story of my life. Uh, 15 seconds to one minute. Uh, so what have we got there? In uh, ooh, oh, Three of you have gone for... A four. Everyone's gone for B. My goodness. Have you seen this before? Yes, it is. It is B. So anyone who speaks for a minute, uh, well, goodness. Right. So next thing, it is estimated e-commerce will account for 90% of consumer purchases by what date? Mm, A, 2030, 2040, 2050. What have we got on the chat line? Oh. Three of you have gone for 2030. 
wonder what the answer is. I don't know, I did this this morning. <laughs> 2014. Not that far away. Actually, it's interesting, the pandemic, uh, uh, gosh, uh, a year old, no less, the World Health Organization almost announced it a year to the day. That it's, that it's moved forward, uh, the, um, the advent of online trading by as much as three to four years in terms of the speed at which uh, things have gathered. So we'll, we'll come back to that during our afternoon. Here we go. Impression four. Which of these things in an email subject line can drop an open rate by over 60%? Implied urgency, no words, three words or more. Oh, oh we've got takers on this one. Okay. Gary is on fire today. He's on fire. Because I think the answer is three words or more it's interesting that when you actually are writing an email subject that sometimes less is more there we go particularly if you are writing things on a, in a in maybe to a customer base that you're not in a regular contact with also the effective use of emojis is always something to think about particularly on newsletters come back to that next question when <laughs> when will this just to have to reply to that one, just a little bit of light relief. Um, right, next one, question six. 80% of sales require five follow-up calls. Mm, true or false? It is. Well, most of you have gone for true. And it is. It's one of the vagaries of business to business sales in particular. If you have an inquiry and you provide a quotation, whatever it is, or you're giving a customer a quotation, and it does require quite a considerable amount of follow up as an average, it's estimated that most people give up after two or three attempts. There's always the crossover here about whether you should be following up uh, regularly or whether you are a quote unquote stalker. You're going to get the right balance, right? I wouldn't suggest ringing someone on the hour every hour, but it does require follow-up calls. Here we go. Eight out of ten. It's a bit like Jimmy Carr, isn't it? Eight out of ten cats. I've got a Jimmy Carr story as well. Come up in a minute. I'll start in a minute. Eight out of ten prospects want to talk to salespeople via email. So actually, quote, you're talking to people. Is that true or is that false? What have we got on the old chat line? Well, Ian's gone for true, Catherine's false, Poppy's true. It is true. I think this stems from having an audit trail, this type of thing, and we'll come back to, and also maybe the, the change of behavior for Generation Z and millennials. But many want to communicate in that way. So, 65% of salespeople who use social selling fill their pipeline that way. True or false? Actually on social media. Whoa, what have we got here then on the old chat line? It is in Spandau Bali speak. Funny how it is. Well, funny how it seems, wasn't it? Wasn't that the only line? It is true. And Right, question nine. Customers are referred by a friend are two times or twice more likely to buy. True or false? What have you got here? Oh my goodness. How many people have said true to that? Well, Catherine, Kevin, Gary, Ian have all said true and you're all wrong. It's false. They're four times more likely to buy. <laughs> Can't, gotta, have a, gotta have one where you get it wrong. Yes, four times more likely to buy. And we're going to return to referrals during the course of our time together. So there we are. Thank you for taking part in today's quiz. Some salient points there that we'll um, 
we will return to and thank you very much for your suggestions about future webinars uh, so really appreciate that and if anyone has a brainstorm during that please feel free to go on to the, the chat line and forgive me i've shown these these two or three slides before but uh, so those of you who've seen them do apologize or it is reinforcement but fundamentally there are only three ways in which you can grow your revenue first one is to get more customers secondly to get more sales from existing clients customers to get people to buy more often which some would say is a derivative of number two now this is a fundamental issue this doesn't this applies to any business however size whatever size whatever scale whether it's business to consumer business to business it's a, it's a very simple philosophy in terms of tackling sales now what is fundamentally true it is an absolute cold clinical fact that you are far more likely to sell to an existing customer than you are to a new prospect. So when you ever think about sales, or whether in a pre-pandemic, post-pandemic, during pandemic, it's still the same issue. Your sales should ideally start with your existing customers in trying to get them to stay it is known as customer retention much easier place to start and as you see as we go through also to use your customers as a springboard to other opportunities now here's a question for you take a moment to think about this take a little deep breath when i say this you might love your customers yes you might do they're a source of revenue for you but many of you they may be the only source of revenue but here's a cold question between your eyes but have you ever asked yourself if that love is reciprocal there we go you might love your customers but have you ever asked if that love is reciprocal now i don't expect you to pick up the phone and say do you love me <laughs> I don't quite expect that, but do you ever ask the question as to why you why they buy from you, why they continue to buy from you, what you can do differently, and what we can improve to get some really honest feedback. I've often said that, that, that I said it on previous discussions that customers have no rhyme or reason to actually tell you that they're not going to buy from you or they're going to continue to buy from you and particularly us yorkshire folk who just sometimes vote with our feet so think really carefully about that because this is the issue that it's generally believed that only about 13 percent of all customers believe that the salesperson or the company fully understands their needs if you don't fully understand your customers' needs, how do you know how to satisfy them? How do you have to continue to do what they need, what they might need in the future, what they may, may need? So it's really thinking absolutely fundamentally about knowing your customers inside out, backwards, forwards, etc., and repeatedly talking to them, which is a view we'll come to. So, here are some straight tips to think about all the things that you can be doing with your existing clients. So firstly, I hope we all get them, whether we like it or not, there are the issues that we need to resolve. So you resolve your complaints issues quickly. Absolute expectation for most businesses now. Secondly, is actually to be flexible on refunds, cancellations, anything that may be critical there rather than prescriptive and pedantic, but nor do you want to be the human doormat as well. So it's getting the right balance there, but if you've got a relationship with them, that wouldn't be hopefully a major problem. It's really to think carefully about 
providing real-time customer service. So that's having completely available. Maybe the phone doesn't get switched off at one minute past five. You may introduce a chat bot onto your website. You respond to emails. Now, I'm not expecting anyone to be answering emails at 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning, but there may be the odd situation where that is, a, is, is relevant or just to think about you actually being there for your clients. And to, if you are delivering marketing campaigns, just to send out a blanket email, dear sir, things of this nature, is actually to personalize campaigns for your clients. And that, isn't it nice to get a surprise? Oh, we all like one. Get one on our birthday. Well, come back to that. So, so, so think about sometimes actually this is an issue about giving extra to clients. And all wrapped up into what I think is the most important word you're going to hear this afternoon. And is the essence of sales. The essence of marketing is that you will provide value to your customers. But they are the judges of what is and what isn't value. What's that there? What's that doing on the screen? What's, do you know what anyone knows that is? Any, any take us that one? It's, it's a car, famous car. Ever want to look at, at the DeLorean? Yeah, back to the future. So I recently went to buy a car. Not the said much, but worthwhile always looking into the story about someone who was disruptive in changing the market. I went to buy a car recently. And the story behind this is that I was referred by a friend who knew somebody who worked at the garage. And I went to the dealership and I walked in the door and the first thing that greeted me was a smile and to sit down and they offered to have a cup of coffee and to, to and then they asked me a number you know, questions, what would I like, et cetera. And we got to that point. And then it was, would you like to go and test drive the car? Went to test drove the car, came back. I asked if I could go and test drive another one, could do. Then would you, would you like me to keep, they then offered the opportunity for me to keep the car for a short period of time. I ended up buying the car, on, uh, we, we came to an agreement in terms of the financing, et cetera. So it was favorable to me. And then I buy the car. When I arrived to buy the car, what, was, what happened? Well, on top, of the car, on top of the roof of the car, they'd put a big bow. And inside, they'd given a bunch of flowers to, to me that I could obviously give to, to somebody else. They went the extra mile. And they then, on the day itself, as it was the first time I'd bought from this car, they gave me the added value of a year's breakdown cover. You could argue that a double-edged sword, that one. And so there was extra in there. And then what happened when I drove home? There was a little letter waiting for me with a picture of the car and a thank you. And a week later, what happened to me? Got a phone call. A slight issue with the car, which I went back the following week and they just sorted it very quickly and what happened after that i got a phone call to make sure everything was okay long-winded story very simple story they went the extra mile they were offering value to me they were following up this is in a you know it what in the, in the world that we're in they were differentiating themselves from their competition so, and what do I do? I would refer them to somebody else because of the value they've given me. So, that is time immemorial in sales. So, let's look at the latest sales trends, moving on from that, that story. And the real issue now, is anyone familiar with what sales enablement is? Oh, nice little slide, this one. Sales enablement is a process. It provides 
the person who's dealing, we'll call them the salesperson, with the customer or customers, everything they need. Information, content, and tools. The days of just ringing people up blindly and not knowing anything about the customer are long gone. It's the idea that marketing and sales are joined at the hip. So the real essence is, the real benefits of sales enablement, it's usually a system base which will come on to, that you're keeping in very regular contact. You have all the data you need relating to the customer. It will then have the benefit of dealing with sales conversions, you can see the customer's behavior and that you are intending to build a long lasting relationship. It is a, a modern kind of almost say a cliche, cliche type term, but an American term, but it's the idea that you know everything about your customers, you've got all the information at your fingertips and you're dealing and you're understanding how the customer is behaving. It's no different from irrespective of time, time's gone by that now we're just using technology and we'll come on to CRM systems in a moment. So, little quiz now. But moving on from that, the next slide is going to show that the, the most successful sales methods over the last year for business to business sales. I'm going to sit quietly for a moment, have a little drink, and I'm going to encourage you to write down on, on the chat line what you think the most successful sales tools have been. Is that making phone calls? Is that social media? Is that, well, you tell me. Let's have a little think for a moment. Write that down. I'm going to come back to it in a moment. You can type the fastest. Gary's gone for social media, followed by calls. Kevin's on face-to-face -face dialogue. Discounted offers. Pauline, mm, good stuff here. Social media promotions. You can target customers, Malena. All right, thank you very much. And what have we got? Create a monthly email newsletter. Great, thank you, Emma. Very good, some good stuff there. So, busy slide is next on the list. Hard to read. What three marketing tools have been most effective over the past few months? Pandemic world. So, blue first, red second. So you can see reading down the list, what springs out is that the growth has been very much, first one there is that business from existing clients naturally grows. So you've gone from a, an increase there. Second down the list there, you've got referrals. And you can see the change that many businesses have benefited. I think this is a point kept from networking, liaising with them. It has diminished because of our remoteness. We're not in front of as many people as we've had. And you can see that it's seen in things like speaking engagements, conferences. You can see they have dropped. So it's the classic business to business and trying to get business from existing clients. Networking still important, but seeking referrals. And you can see slight, slight growth in things like organic searches and paid searches. And you know the likes of things like that uh, that um, are happening, as well as the use of the phone and social media. Quite a lot to take in, but it still comes back to the same principles that even under these extreme circumstances, we're all in kind of housebound, dealing remotely, existing customers, referrals, keeping contact with people, and you can see what what's happening and what's not. Personally, on the conference, I've been invited to a number of virtual conferences. I attended one, I found it a slightly unsatisfactory experience. But, you know, I, I guess it was like a lot of things, you just get used to, used to them and, and it may well be our future as technology 
moves along. So you'll get a copy of that, and I'll, and I'll refer to the in future as we move on. Right, what's up next? Now, there's a caveat to this, because we are now the population of Generation Z, and is a, is a big part of the economy now, as people actually, a younger generation, will buck the trend of what we've just seen. And this is probably where some of you are alluding to. It's knowing who your customer base is, but the use of Instagram and the use of YouTube and the, the absorption and obviously the growth of TikTok, in that if your customer base is probably more the Generation Z, you may wish to think that some of the methods you've previously seen may not be 100% applicable. So the previous slide was referring very much to business to business. If you are business to consumer, your audience is millennials. You're going to probably put your sales and marketing efforts into these type of platforms. Okay, okay. So there's some trends there. And I'm sorry, this slide is very much out of date. You can see it's a year or so old. But it's the reason why millennials buy, prefer Amazon over something else. It is the functionality that you can read reviews and you can do comparisons reviews and comparisons so from an online trading perspective they are fundamentally the reasons why we like the apart from the the, um, the the superb service is offered there but the reviews and the price comparisons are often the, the driving force behind some of the yourself and younger audiences in terms of millennials and generation z and why they choose e-commerce so let's move on to talk more about some of the sales trends and some of this isn't a massive surprise to many of you but mckinsey and co ran surveys relating to trends and you can see that the three biggest things that's happening in the world of sales is the the the, the uh, purse strings will potentially be put under great pressure we've moved to a digital landscape in terms of more and more people are wanting self-service functionality and, and, and trading electronically and that sales had moved remotely. Probably not a great surprise to you. That is, a, that is what's happened in the, uh, in the COVID world. But there are some seriously big challenges ahead. Now, a little quiz time coming up. There's, there was a survey done of uh, it's about a thousand US businesses speaking to the chief executives and the sales trends were asked what they felt were the greatest challenges ahead in terms of sales and marketing for their business. So answers on it, guesses on the chat line. So is it price, is it quality, is it competition, is it, uh, who knows what it might be. Any suggestions we think that the biggest challenges some major corporations faced. So let's have a little look on the chat line. Do we have any takers here in terms of what is believed to be the challenge ahead? So Gary's on service. Pauline, interesting. CSR, some of you. Price and service, globalization. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah. Any other takers? Nope. Right. Drum roll. Drummel coming up. There we go. The top selling challenges. <laughs> Probably many of them will apply to you. Well, so we've got the chat line before we move on. It's a quick look. Come to let anyone know. CSR. CRS. Right, I'll come back to I can answer that question at the end. It's about CSRs. Big trends. Think about yourself competing against low cost providers differentiating yourself interesting of consistency in executing team meetings the remote world adding value maintaining profitability which is low cost building trust and actually physically getting an appointment in front of clients low cost providers differentiating yourself actually being in front of the customers maintaining profitability some of the issues there would probably face not just on a very senior level or the larger businesses we all probably face the same challenge. I encountered many businesses. I met a lady last week who wanted to sell sweets online. And boxing up in a lovely presentation. 
And I had to ask the question really fundamentally, what, why should someone choose your sweets over someone else? And, you know, when you're up against the big beasts of this world, online, you know, it is, there's all, the, or maybe always someone who is quote unquote cheaper or lower cost, shouldn't use the word cheap. And it, it's that question about competitive differentiation value and it's sometimes very hard to portray value online back to me and my gar car garage they gave me value because i was it was a physical face-to-face -face selling and it was it was phone and you know that the service was impeccable much harder to do that online we can see some of the challenges to face it's really how to overcome these challenges. So how do we overcome them? Ah, there we are. How do we overcome them? Right. Oh, let's see that again. Value. It's really thinking so hard about why someone should choose you over somebody else. And do you know who's got the answer to that question? Your customers. It's understanding why they would choose to buy from you. And it's asking them that because there may be reasons that you haven't thought of, which is known as hidden value. So when you are actually talking to clients and codes to use the phone, etc., what it might be is to understand why they buy from you. And equally as importantly, if you've lost a customer or a customer has gone quiet on you to understand why so to overcome these challenges is really cannot emphasize enough by hook or by crook engage with your customers which will come back and the second thing is and it's in those surveys, it's clearly then, if I can give you one thing to remember from today, is please ask your customers for a referral. Examples from me in the past, I remember going to see a customer in Thirsk, and I was helping them out, with their marketing and doing various things for them and you know you get to know them get into conversation with them and they're on industrial estate and next to them was a waste management company and it got to them do you know the waste management company oh yeah i know him yeah very well well do you think he would benefit from the services i'm providing you yeah i think you would well can you introduce me please yeah i'll give him a ring right now so i finished with that particular client i walked over the road and met the other person. It, you know, we are wired to help. So if you are doing a great job for a client, he will have suppliers, neighbors, colleagues, etc. Please ask for referrals. You'd be amazed that people will help. And this is the whole principle, even online, doing the same thing. Refer a friend. This, you know, to do, run those type of programs for even for e-commerce to refer a friend and there's an incentive for both parties so referrals are absolutely critical and this is obvious that in social selling that that, if, if, that people will do businesses buyers research online you do that yourself when you're looking for something so if your business is focused that way please make sure that you have reviews they're in place that is there there's evidence you've seen that in the way that millennials treated amazon so think about that so make sure you've got online social proof you're asking for referrals and you're engaging with customers so there are some little tips to overcome the challenges and then i'm just going to spend the rest of the time just talking about some of the trends that have happened during covid19 and to sort of look at give you a little sales plan to move forward now, really, the, the thing I would really encourage, and it's become probably putting on a lot of emphasis on this, is to keep the sales activity, the engine 
to use a car analogy, keep it running. And there's really four ways in which to do this. And I'm going to repeat myself from some of the things you've heard already. Absolutely imperative that you pivot to virtual selling. Think about retaining customers to keep engaging with them and then to think all the time about your pipeline of opportunities. Come on to each and every one of those four. Now, a familiar tale to us all. Sitting at home with the phone and the computer. Now, whether we like it or not, that is our future. There'll be many situations probably uh, where there is a move for people moving more back to the office, but the die is cast. So we have to accept the fact that a lot of business will be done remotely. So it's to become a Jedi Knight of, or Master of Zoom, Teams or Skype, whatever your preference is, to look towards, come back to it, having, make sure you're completely productive in using a CRM system, whatever method, and say events are largely replaced by digital. So the, think really carefully about how you can absolutely harness that. Really interesting, don't know if anyone saw at the weekend the story behind the company down, I think it was in Devon or Dorset way, that was, business was booming. Now what this business was about was that they provided um, classic books in, 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 in lovely um, traditional leather bound copies and the, the, their business started years ago into dress film sets etc and to provide a lot of books of that nature for, for, um, uh, for those type of things and they are supplying books to many well-known people and to many uh, less well-known but people who are regularly on Zoom because people are starting to dress their rooms in possibly a, you could argue, a highbrow way and to present a brand or an image of themselves. A little bit minimalist in Simon's world here. I've got my Dostoevsky in Ibsen uh, by my bedside, which I read, as you know, in, in between sort of Dale Carnegie um, and all the other management books I can think of. But think really carefully. Now, how many of you have done that? I've been on Zoom calls, oh, I'll have a little, like through the keyhole. I'll have a little look. Think about that. I know there's some, there's some horror stories, <laughs> children and dogs and arguments and who knows what and things falling down in the background. But think really carefully about, about your branding and how you appear online. Just sit up straight and uh, smile and all those kind of things. It's a virtual selling. We've already talked about it. Second on our list, customer retention. Absolutely critical. Fight tooth and nail, keep customers. And it's then addressing the issue about why customers leave. Now, why do customers leave a business? Well, time for a little sip of water. Would anyone like to bob on the chat line the principal reasons as to why a customer would leave working, leave a customer? I didn't say how old, did I? Why a customer leaves a company or stops buying from them? Do we have any takers? Bad service. Better service elsewhere. Poor service. Goodness gracious. Are you in coats? Cheaper elsewhere, says Poppy. Bad quality, Milena. Well, why do people leave? Drum roll. <laughs> all right the customer dies a very small percentage customer leaves market customer gets friend to provide service customer persuaded to go to competitor oh and look customer is dissatisfied with your service customer believes you don't care about them you said it in all different ways it's that you think it's that wrapped up in that don't care them bad service poor service call you what you will dissatisfied accounts for the majority of choices. So absolutely critical back to this idea about keeping contact with customers, giving them a world-class service 
and you'll stay and that may a feature in when you actually ask your customers why they stay with you there we go service is where business is won and kept but also won and lost so ultimately it is a human relationship about building rapport between you and them remember that question i asked you half an hour ago you love your customers but are you sure they love you so some tips for customer attention you want to be noticing any signs in advance haven't bought from you for a while haven't heard you from a while ghosted so this is the idea about having a system in place that there are triggers some of you may have a photographic memory some not you may have 10 customers may have 100 customers may have a thousand you want to know what is happening so having a crm system and I, three on the screen there zoho hubspot in cycle i've used them all in different shapes and sizes a lot of them are free but they can set up tasks they can set up triggers they can do so much to help you manage your business to keep a close eye on activity relating to customer retention we'll come to crm in more detail another way which is in this format the methodology is the same for any business attract them into your business engage with them delight them this is the idea about customer service you want people to come to you you want to engage with them and you want to keep them so it just goes round and round in a circle so once you keep them you keep them keep them there so thinking about once you've got them you keep keep hold of them keep hold of them keep hold of them which is known in very many terms as the lifetime of the customer keep your customers it is always worth targeting customers with special offers so, you know it's a riot in simon's inbox today confession time mns i buy it from mns i am one of the people but yet you know, it appears there you know don't online only spend and save and they're offering me savings depending on how much i'm spending very simple email there i mentioned about about the use of the save up to 25 pounds small number of characters here again is keeping in contact with me but they'll know from their their email newsletter systems if i'm opening it or clicking through right so targeting with special offers especially ones who are dormant with you and then to think about rewarding your most profitable customers what you may classify as the vip customers the classic Pareto principle. You know, it applies to so many businesses that 80% of the business will come from 20%. So you're thinking about making sure you keep hold of that 20%. So you're treating them essentially like gold standard. Not saying you're going to provide a poorer service to the others, but you'll know the most profitable customers and you should be able to uh, act accordingly this is the thing i mentioned earlier that if you are following up with people you are communicating with whatever matter, please please personalize it treat a customer like a long lost friend you wouldn't ring up a long lost friend and not call him by his name you wouldn't write him a letter and not call him by his name or you wouldn't message him probably without including his name in the message so why you do this why, with your customers you must also think about personalizing things and this is having a crm system you'll know when christmas is but do you actually know when your customers birthdays are the names of their children anything that might the whether they are whatever football team they support whatever their interests are it is gold dust to know something deeper about your customers that can be in your CRM system that may trigger something. It's such a powerful thing if you get a note from uh, from any, from one of your suppliers wishing you a happy birthday. That is personalised. That is added value. 
and this back to the same issue about keeping the engine running following up keeping in contact with your customers with a caveat not being a stalker but keep engaging with them so how do you keep engaging with your customers well this is where you think about what an engaged customer is so returning visitors to your website we'll cover as we'll do it in a, a, a future webinar about knowing your analytics and being familiar with who is visiting your website and looking at returning visitors to your site then being using systems or your own eyes and ears to know who is commenting and sharing and liking your social media posts so they would be an engaged customer or a fan and using the likes of mention or hootsuite a great uh, uh, tools to use to keep a close eye on who is engaging with your social media. So you have a double whammy if a customer is engaging with you, both transactionally and socially. So you may wish to think about that, but think of it the other way round as well. Think about, say, your top 10 customers. Ask yourself this question Do you engage with them on social media? Do you like their posts? Do you share their posts? Do you comment on their posts? Engagement's a two-way street. Then you'll do a, think about the opens, the click-throughs, and the replies, and your marketing emails. So for example, Marks and Spencers, I'm a little cog in their wheel, but I'm a customer, and they'll know what I'm what I'm clicking through and whether what I'm opening. So they may well change their approach in terms of me or other clients, what works and what doesn't. So there's lots of mail, email tracking, MailChimp and other services and HubSpot where you can clearly see what's working and what, what people are clicking through and the behavior rating to your newsletters. Then the instances of people generating con content so testimonials photos reviews fantastic way to know if customers are engaged so the likes of checking all the time and encouraging people to post reviews on the likes of Google and Facebook and Trustpilot and TripAdvisor and wherever you might be you know check a trade or wherever it will be is for customers to be there so you they're generating their own content relating to your your business or service and you're all looking at your bounce rate on your on your website because ideally you want to have a low bounce rate so your customers are arriving on your website and doing more than one thing so that these are some of the things in which you get a flavor from your engaged customers but really one probably the most critical one is are they ringing you are they emailing you are they actually in contact with you? But you can engage with your customers in lots of different ways. And some of the ways we mentioned, sending out newsletters. McDonald's, a great example to follow. I subscribe to them, and it's just partly because I want to plagiarize some of them. Look at their ideas. Didn't hear that from me. But they're great, always for picking up the tools, but they're in constant contact with the customer. Secondly, you think about asking questions of your customers. And this is obviously on social media here. You, how do you choose a name for your business? So it's Shopify or engaging with their clients. Using surveys. You know, here's an example about actually sending out a survey to your customers. So it's a great thing to do to get engagement, see what level of response there is. Sometimes you may have to incentivize customers to take part, but thinking that it's about using surveys. The, one of the best ways learn this to my cost <laughs> is to use humor I've shown this slide a number of times your social media your website wherever it might be you might wish to take you know a leap of faith put a little bit of personality sometimes humor doesn't travel but putting humor into some of your social media posts is a great way of engaging clients think of it this way customers may not remember what you said but they'll remember how you made them feel. 
So we think about your service and the use of things like this. Social media is about make how you make people feel. So whenever you're posting, whenever you're engaging with a client, think about how you make them feel, which comes back to the point about you loving your customers and do they love you? Videos, the use of videos, I've said this many times, fantastic way of a business showing personality. And then the final bit here on the sales engine is to think about your pipeline. Ask yourself this question. What business am I likely to get in June, in July, and August? Do you know about the opportunities that you're likely to have that's coming through and where, the, where you're going to actually generate your revenue from in those months or those times ahead so what plates are spinning and that will be possibly in a crm system the people you've spoken to the opportunities you're tracking the seasonality of the business the offers you want to put out there think really carefully about your pipeline so i would encourage either for an either, both for a consumer-based business from business to business is to have a sales funnel a lit it could be as simple as a list all the opportunities that you have on the go at the moment are they hot cold very cold whatever they are and then think about requalifying them so if you've spoken to a client given them a proposal send them some you may be tendering for something is requalifying them is it still live and more and more from many of the clients I'm dealing with, we end up in a situation where we have to look at, you know, focusing one deal over another. But all the time, the mentality is about value and how can you help your customers? How can you help it to borrow a modern cliche to get it over the line? So that is prioritizing the pipeline. And then ultimately, you'll end up with a sales plan. I've got five minutes to show you this. So get a copy of this. You want a one page plan of how you're going to do your sales. So you're thinking about who your target clients are. So more likely to be existing customers, also prospects. You're thinking about the value you're offering them. You're thinking about what means you're going to message them or how you're going to communicate with them. You think about how you may price, maybe offers, who knows what. Are you, going to, are you going to do that directly or indirectly? There may be a third party involved. The process to do that, so you might be using a CRM system, and then the structure of what you're doing, so you may use somebody else, and the after sales. Here is for a very simple business. Do that quite quickly, and forgive me because I'm conscious of the time think about it as a plumbing business here we are a plumber has got his, his target audience is consumers in whole who own their own house that's who his target customers are his proposition to them is offering plumbing services is, is also offering smart technology so there's benefit there to the customer he's going to use direct mail he's going to use facebook and he'll use newsletters to existing clients he's going to benchmark himself against other local competition he's going to supply this message direct to existing customers but he's also going to be using checker trade and google ads he's going to use a crm system to set reminders and to, to, to run those processes he's going to employ somebody or you spend half a day a week in terms of the structure and he's going to follow up with phone calls and customer surveys that is it a typical sales plan using all the things we spoke about for the business that may not be the most sophisticated one but the process is the same target customers the value offer them how you're going to do it how you're going to follow things through and that applies as a sales plan whether in pandemic post pandemic or wherever you might be it is something you have one sheet of paper there we go and so we're going to conclude with thinking about how to find sales opportunities. There's two ways of doing it, to go outbound and to go inbound. 
So whenever you're thinking about what you're doing at this moment in time, that you may need a combination of trying to bring people to you or actually go outside. So a lot of things we focus on that. So your plan will reflect those two things. There we go. So thank you very much for today. I hope you found it beneficial. We'll be doing this next week. So oh, final thoughts. Think customer, think digital, think value. Think customer, think digital, think value is our final thoughts of the day. Thank you very much for attending. Next week, we'll be back to talk all about the Google. We'll talk about the 10 tools you can use from Google to help you in your sales and marketing. And we now have five minutes to take any questions. Have we got any questions? Oops. Well, thank you, Ian. Very kind words. Delighted to help, as always. Well, if there are no further questions, I will bid you good afternoon. I hope you enjoyed it. So just to remind you, you get a copy of the uh, link to the recording. You'll get a copy of the slides and an invitation to next week's extravaganza. So if there aren't any further questions, I hope you found it beneficial. And I bid you adieu. Until next.